2K Sports. I'm Damon Bruce. Glad to have you with us. Friday Hoops Fest coming up next. It's the Miami Heat facing off against the San Antonio Spurs. And now off to at and I'm not afraid. Yeah. It's been a ride. You can try and read my lyrics off of this paper before I lay them. But you won't take the sting out these words before I say it. I'm going to be what I set out to be. Without a doubt, I'm tired of bleeding. And all those who look down on me, I'm tearing down your balcony. No way fans of us, don't try to ask him why. And now we take a brief check at the matchup. Our starting five for both teams. First for Miami, Chalmers and D. Wade are the guards. And playing at the five, the always versatile 6'11 star big man, able to score inside and out, Chris Bosch. And it's LeBron James, and it's Haslam in at the four side. And looking at the Spurs, Parker and Danny Green are your one and your two. And in the middle, out of Brazil, taken with the 28th pick back in 2008, the 6'11 pivot man, Tiago Splitter. Then there's Kawhi Leonard, and it's Duncan in at the power forward. You know, I thought San Antonio really was an outstanding team. Fun to watch, excellent at both ends of the floor. But one statistical thing that stood out was they defended at a high level without committing a lot of fouls. That takes discipline and smart. And so the tip-off, it's Miami. LeBron James on the wing. And out of bounds as San Antonio gains possession. Leonard with the ball. Clark, as you said about uh, that Spurs team, just a team that does not foul very often. Doesn't give away three points. And Steve, they led the league in fewest fouls last season. Well, that's part of Greg Popovich's mantra. I mean, they don't give up anything easy. You, you, you can't guard a free throw, obviously. You can't guard a fast break. So, so important for the Spurs to avoid fouls and take care of the basketball and be efficient offensively. And that helps their D. Here is Splitter, following the basket by Chris Bosch, and the foul on Dwayne Wade. That is his first foul of the game. Well, he tried to step in and cut him off, but just not quick enough. And we have the benefit of replay, but I think they got that one right, which is the case most times, even though fans don't think so. It's Parker with the drive. Just five on the clock. Thank in off the glass. You know, he operates so well close to the bucket. There's nothing he likes more than seeing an opening inside. You know, you survey other point guards in the league and ask them who their toughest assignment is, and a lot of them will tell you it's Tony Parker. I mean, his ability to weave in and out at the speed he does just drives would-be defenders mad over the course of four quarters. Parker is always in attack mode. Here's Parker following the basket by LeBron James. And Doris Burke caught up with Coach Greg Popovich. Doris? Of course, the conversation veered to the challenge of defending LeBron James. And he said, there's not a lot of good options with him. He can really do it all. I think you just have to try and stay in front of him. And if he gets in close, you have to bring help. And guys, we've seen LeBron really force the issue as far as getting into the lane. We'll see how they do. All right, Doris, thanks. And Clark, you mentioned the penetration ability of Tony Park. He really has become the focal point of the Spurs drive and, and kick off and Steve, so fun to watch. Yeah, you talk about his speed and his quickness, but it's really all about the overall skill level, the ability to finish it in the lane, uh, the, the knockdown jump shooting, uh, the free throw shooting also improved. But it's incredible how well-rounded Parker has become. Is he the fastest point guard, you think, in the NBA? I would say yes. Hmm. So one for two that time at the strike. The Heat have magnificent talent, but even coming off an NBA title, they had never put their name into the conversation of the great team until last spring when they went on that amazing 27-game winning streak. Yeah, and he's a bomber. I mean, that's what I love about him. He's as good a three-point shooter as you'll see. And of course, has the green light to let it fly anytime he wants. And he's a great three-point shooter, too, especially when he lets it go from one of those corners. He doesn't miss many of those. And for the Heat, they were staring right at the 72 Lakers win record, and I'm sure everyone remembers, but ultimately they would fall speed to the Bulls after 27 consecutive wins. Yeah, that streak to me was one of the great feats in NBA history. Winning 27 games in a row in the regular season, so difficult, but it showed you what the Heat were made of. They really uh, were battling every night, and I thought that put them on a great run heading into the playoffs. Mano Ginobili, he's checked in for Daniel Green. Leonard attacking a 
elbow shot. Offensive rebound. Duncan kicks to Parker. He feeds it to Ginobili. Back to Parker. Nice ball boomer by San Antonio. Pass the splitter. He dishes it to Ginobili. Parker, Parker, Parker. The shot from the low post is good. Ginobili's got his first bucket in this one. Man, a gaping hole in the defense that time. And he didn't waste any time getting through it. Spurs leading by five. You know, Heat head coach Eric Spolster worked his way up from the very bottom in that organization. I mean, he got his start as a video coordinator and through years of hard work and dedication has really become an outstanding coach. Rejected by LeBron. Chalmers with it. He's picked up by Parker. The dish to Bosch. Shot, up, shot, shot from 12. It's rebounded by Leonard. And back to coach Eric Spolster as a guy who got his start as a video coordinator, picking the game apart. Steve, he's very comfortable with the new advanced stat move analytics in he the is. NBA. Yeah, and I've had a chance to speak with him quite a bit. He says that the way they use advanced stats is just as a conversation piece in the coaching room. Uh, their, their analytics department will bring them various information, and it will force them to ask questions, which is very healthy uh, for a coaching staff to do. And that one's good. Parker. Boy, that was impressive. Major height disadvantage, but he still got the shot up over his man. Well, he's got the poise to handle any matchup, and he's not easily intimidated. You can see that there. You know, he's been off his game this quarter just a bit. Hasn't been able to get a whole lot to go so far. Hit his foot, and it's whistled a kick. A different look for Miami. Chris Anderson has checked in for Bosch. Mattier comes in for Udonis Hassan. And it's Allen in for Dwayne Wade. To the paint. Here's Parker. And stolen by LeBron. In transition, here comes Miami. Maddie with the ball. Now, this is why the breakaway rim was invented. For plays just like that. Well, he almost brought the whole thing down, Clark, by hanging on that long. Yeah, he did. Well, didn't he? It was a great dunk and also a great game we've got here. Parker dishes to Dion. Oh, good on the three. Well, it was a little bit of a surprise, guys, going into last season when Ray Allen signed the contract with the Heat. He took less money than the Celtics offered. And no question about it, there was some anger from his former teammates in Boston when he left. Bellinelli for three, and it's good in the assist by Parker. Bellinelli's got himself going with the triple, his first basket of the game. And here's Anderson from the arc. A shot misses. And San Antonio will go the other way with it. And Clark for Ray Allen. I, I don't think joining the Heat was just about jumping on a winning bandwagon. I think there'd be some issues for him in Boston. Well, there were a lot of rumors that he and Rajon Rondo didn't quite get along. And Allen wanted maybe a bigger role offensively. And in fact, you know, his minutes went down last season with the Heat. But uh, he clearly fit in well. Came off the bench and really fit nicely with that shooting ability next to LeBron and Wade. The Heat trail by eight. Two seconds separating the shot clock and game clock. Inside. Gets it to go. You know, they've scored several times already here in the first quarter down low. I like that. Yeah, me too, Clark. I think anytime you have success counting the ball inside, you've got to continue to go to the well. Here's Bellinelli, defended by Allen. Ginobili sets a screen for Parker. And it's LeBron James with the rebound. That's what they call the million-dollar move with the 10-cent finish. And that concludes the first quarter of play. Spurs lead by six. Let's take a quick break now, and then it's on to the second quarter after this. And the first quarter is in the books. Second about ready to get underway. And some stats here, guys. The scoring breakdown for the Spurs. We've seen a lot of their points coming off penetration in this first half. Also, what passing we've seen from them here early. I mean, there could be a big number in the assist column if this keeps up. And let's now go to the sideline. We'll catch up here with Doris Burke. Doris? 
guys, it's hard to doubt that LeBron James, after two straight titles and four MVPs in the last five years, seems to be at the top of his game. LeBron candidly said, quote, I'm at my highest peak. I don't know if I can continue to improve. But he certainly remains motivated, saying, quote, at the end of the day, I have a goal to be the best of all time, and I'm going to put that pressure on myself. And Kevin, if he can just stay at this level for a long period of time, he may get there. I like his chances. Thanks. I'll tell you what, he is so difficult to guard, especially on a shot like that one. You know, when something works for you, you stay with it. The Heat saw after the 2012 Finals that small ball was very effective for him. You can see why they chose to do that, given how hard it is to find a power forward that can match up with LeBron. Makes good sense. Hattier, the pass to Anderson. And fouled hard that time. He'll get to the line and shoot two. And mismatches really are what make an NBA offense go at time. Not only can Miami overpower you, Steve, you know, with their sheer talent at times, but if you're trying to guard a perimeter play with a big, you're going to be in trouble. Well, some people still see small ball as a gimmick, but, you know, for Miami, it's different because you've got LeBron James playing the, the power forward. It's not really small ball. He, he can rebound, he can defend, he can do everything. And so in the Heat become a nightmare to guard at the other end, and you, you can rarely take advantage of them offensively. Pick it out! Pick As it to out. Leonard, into Tim Duncan. A stupendous finish in traffic. And the Spurs lead by four. He'd have gone two or three from the field here to open the second quarter. LeBron, that's a two-pointer. Miami no good on that time either. San Antonio's gone 0-2 from deep here in the second. Well, you know, you look at LeBron James, maybe more than any other player in NBA history, he's great in a way that transcends position. Size, skill, savvy, know-how. I mean, he's got it all. Leonard, the open look. And that one hits back iron. That's a tough one there because he's wide open. That's a shot he expects to make. And the defense didn't have position. They whistle a blocking foul, and he'll go to the line. And we're going to talk about LeBron's ability to really play any position on the floor. When you when you look back, has Steve there ever been a player you could say that about? I'm not sure if you could say that about uh, both ends of the floor. I mean, there's a lot of great defensive players who could guard everybody. You know, Scottie Pippen or Dennis Rodman. Offensively, Magic Johnson could play any position he wanted, but to be able to do so at both ends is what separates LeBron James. Lock at six, and Bellinelli kicks to Duncan, feeds it to Splitter. Gets it to go from eight feet. Here in the second quarter, we've played a little over two and a half minutes now. LeBron James on the wing. Bosch covered by Duncan. And Chalmers kicks to Bosch. Leonard attacking, and he dumps it in right on Chris Bosch. Oh, man. Tell you what, he's going to put that one in his scrapbook. Absolutely insane with that dunk. Well, now they're starting to rub it in, aren't they? Have to build up the lead, and here we go, folks. It's showtime. And why not? I mean, the more plays they make like that, the more they'll have these guys on the ropes. San Antonio making a switch here. Ginobili's checked in. Leonard kicks to Duncan. Working on James. Fade away. Here's Splitter. Foul call. Looked like the D didn't get there in time. And he'll shoot free throws. That's on LeBron James. One quality of his that really stands out is his skill as a, a screen setter in the pick and roll. Actually, he's, he's good on both ends of that play. But I really like putting him in that situation. And Steve, you know, being a good finisher in the pick and roll requires timing and athleticism. And he's got both. The Heat trail by 10. Will it go? And the jumper is on the mark. LeBron's got 10 points. You know, he's knocking down his shots today, but it hasn't really translated to the scoreboard yet. Coach Popovich was fine last season for sitting out his top players in a nationally televised matchup against the Heat. I certainly understand the league's posture there, and it was a lot said about it. Yet, for a veteran team like the Spurs with championship aspirations, I understand resting key players during the course of the regular season. And here in the second quarter of action, as we approach four minutes played, Duncan, he's guarded by Haslam. Sweet move. 
and lots of contact there. Missing the shot. He'll shoot two. It's going to be on Udonis Hazel. And back to that fine for Popovich. A quarter of a million dollars. Steve, that'll leave a dent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But, you know, Popovich enjoys tweaking the league at times. Uh, this was clearly an effort to do that. But, uh, look, yeah, I think it's it's good for him to, to actually you know, kind of let the league know every once in a while. That if you're going to give us that kind of schedule with my older team, I'm, you know, I'm going to sit them down once in a while. Let's check out what Doris Burke has for us. You guys, as you know, the Miami Heat try to keep the plays they run as simple as they can and rely on their talent and teamwork to win them games. But playing like that can present its own kind of problems. Coach Folster said, quote, the challenge is not getting bored with simplicity. Simple is what works, though, as evidenced by their back-to-back -back titles, guys. Well, Doris, sometimes it makes sense to keep it simple. Thanks. That's good. And it's six points for Tim Duncan. I find it comically absurd at times when you hear people talk about the Spurs being boring to watch. I don't know what they're talking about. I mean, the fourth highest scoring team in the league last season, they put up big numbers and they do it with style, sharing the ball and with a lot of guys getting shots. Tony Parker's checked in for the Spurs. Good. Shooting much better here in the second quarter. Yeah, their offense has really come alive. Can they come back and even it up? That's the question. Splitter. Nice ball movement by San Antonio. Leonard. Misses the three. And the offense of the Spurs, you mentioned the style club. Number one last season in assist percentage. Fourth in three-point percent. Well, it's an unselfish kind of drive-and-kick offense that's led by Tony Parker because of his penetration, just how fast he is. Then you've got Manu Ginobili also with his ability to get to the rim. Uh, so you spread defenses out with the penetration, the shooters. you got Tim Duncan down low. They are really tough to guard. Spurs leading by eight. The shot by Ginobili. Once again off the mark by San Antonio. For Miami, they've gone six of nine in the second quarter. Some good work from the field. And now the fast break, Ginobili with the ball. Gets it out to Leonard. The feed to Splitter. The pass to Parker. LeBron against Ginobili. Cannot hit. Yeah, that's a low percentage shot right there. Yeah, it sure is. I mean, he's got to be thinking out there a little better. Make the pass in that situation. Don't force a bad shot. And that one's good. And we finished one half of basketball. It's now presented by Sprint. Good afternoon. The Sprint Halftime Report presented by Sprint. And we welcome you back to the Alamo City of San Antonio, Texas. Checking out the game LeBron is having. Ten points. And what a tear he's been rejecting shot after shot. No doubt, Clark. He has absolutely owned the paint. And as he has gained more experience in the league, Wade has taught himself to rely a bit more on his jump shot and a little less on attacking the rim. But still, you see his confidence really lies in his ability to attack the lane. And that's out of bounds. Miami will retain possession. Whoops, they pick off the pass. In transition, here comes San Antonio. Here's Parker. And it's Miami with the rebound. And Wade, still a player who thrives on getting in the lane, Clark, and for his career, under 30% from long range. Yeah, you know, his jump shot is more of a mid-range weapon, quite honestly. He loves the bank shot, loves the floaters, and is always looking to get somebody in the air with that pump fake. And usually, more times than not, these guys bite, and he gets free throws. He gets to the line, you're right. That's exactly what they had in mind on that possession. The Heat trail by 10. Kicks it to Aslam. The three. It's rebounded by Splitter. Splitter's got four rebounds in this game. You know, they're not totally dominating the glass, but they're definitely doing enough to keep this lead right where it is. Well, if you're doing enough good things and you're maintaining uh, at least a, a slight edge on the boards, you're usually going to be in pretty good shape. The Spurs have hit all four of their chances so far in this one. 
Well, this was a very consistent free throw shooting team a year ago. They shot about 79%. You know, Kevin, they would love to post a similar percentage again this season. I mean, I think that's safe to say they'd love to shoot free throws as well as they did a year ago. You know, the Spurs really have a cohesive culture, and part of that is something that Greg Popovich has been able to do, and that's being able to join guys together that normally might not hang out. For instance, you had Matt Bonner taking Steven Jackson out to a Coldplay concert last season. One way to help guys get to know each other off the court, and it helps them on the court. And Green slams it in. Boy, I love it. Active hands on the steal, active feet on the fast break. And Clark Power on the dunk. Man, guys, this is just too close of a game to be giving the ball up like that and then failing to get back in transition. And the Spurs making a change here. Diaz checked in. And back to Popovich and the Spurs, he really makes a point of getting to know his players and have them get to know one another. That's right, Kevin. He, he likes to have his players have a sense of perspective about the world. He wants them to know that there are other things going on besides the NBA. In fact, back in 2012, he had the players watching the presidential debates together. Really not hard to see why they're giving up points on this run. I mean, they've just given them too many looks inside. Yeah, I mean, they're just getting pounded in there. The defense not offering much resistance. They've got to force the ball back out to the perimeter. Green, the finger roll finish at the bucket. Green's got four points this quarter. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. They keep getting in the paint and keep scoring points. Keep it going. Yeah, not a lot you can do defensively when they continue to get the ball inside and get these easy shots. Dishes at the park. Outside Leonard. Spurs working the ball around now. And Diaw kicks to Parker. Passes it to Green. Five on the clock. Goes up on the high post. Offensive rebound. Duncan with the bucket. Duncan's got 12. And they've got a big lead, not just on the scoreboard, but in the rebounding department too, Clark. Yeah, it's been a really gritty performance. They'll have some bruises to show for it, but that's the way it should be. You should feel that you've competed when you do that work inside. Parker against Chalmers. Who's got ball? Parker dishes to Leonard. He kicks to Green. Parker outside. He feeds it to Duncan. The Spurs need to get a shot off here. Let's it fly. Parker with another miss. One thing about Wade that probably doesn't get mentioned enough is that he's one of the best rebounding guards in the NBA. He's only 6'4", but so strong and active. In fact, if you look at his numbers, he's one of the best rebounding guards in the history of the game. And San Antonio calls the first time out of the game. And back to Wade, top five territory, Clark, among shooting guards and rebounds last season. And that's despite dealing with his knee troubles, which were well chronicled. He started wearing a mouthpiece last season, and you can see why. I mean, Wade's a guy who, despite giving up a few inches, has never, ever died away from contact. I think instead of calling him flash, they need to call him crash. crash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it's San Antonio now. They led by as many as 18 points. Parker. Soft touch off the glass. Parker's got four this quarter. Just another outstanding play down low. These teams couldn't be farther apart in their effectiveness in the paint today. Yeah, that's right. It's been all good at one end, and we'll try to be diplomatic here and just say not so good at the other. Tries to keep it alive. And out of bounds as the Heat gain possession. 144 and left to play here in the third. Pass to Haslam. LeBron outside. Puts up a three. That drops. LeBron's got 17. Well, you can't leave him alone, especially from long range. A lot of people thought the East would be a cakewalk for Miami last year, but Indiana made sure that wasn't going to be the case. What a series with the Pacers using their size and strength to pound it, uh, Miami down low and Eventually, the Heat were able to pull it out, but boy, was that a tough series. Daniel Green, he's checked in for Kawhi Leonard. Hey, Tipped. Aslam, the pass to Chalmers. Parker with it. He's got 12. He dishes it to Diaw, feeds to Bellinelli. 
The pass to Diaz. And just to touch back on the Eastern Conference Finals, went to a Game 7 where Miami ran away with the game. But you know, Clark, if it weren't for the heroics of LeBron earlier in the series, it could have been the Pacers that took on San Antonio in the Finals. You know, I was thinking a little bit about two former ABA teams meeting in the NBA Finals, but the Heat managed to steal Game 1, and I thought that proved to be the difference in the end. That was a game the Pacers had and didn't squeeze. But the way these two teams are constructed, they should be seeing a lot more of each other in the near future. And I think that's great for the league because whenever they meet up in the regular season or the playoffs, it's always been a battle the last couple of years. Nice rivalry developing I between think those you're two. Right. Yeah. A good one brewing there. Mm. A shot by LeBron, no good. With the success they've had rebounding the basketball, they're right where you'd expect them to be firmly in control of this game. Yeah, they have not let their guard down one bit in the paint. Parker outside. Drop the pick from Duncan. Shot clock at five. Three, three, three. Parker with it. And Bosch picks him up defensively. LeBron outside. Miami no good on that time either. Great defense there. You really have to challenge him with that range. And as we end the third quarter, a double-digit deficit. <laughs> and we welcome you back as we get going here in the fourth quarter. The final quarter of play can change everything. And a chance for just a second to check out the scoring breakdown for the Spurs. Boy, guys, I really like how they've driven the ball to the basket in this game. I mean, they've been very aggressive with it. And they've been knocking down the mid-range jumper as well. San Antonio leading by 11. And here is Parker. Leonard kicks to Diaw. Shot clock at six. 16 feet away. Excellent D there from Anderson. Good, tough defense there. Getting a hand up, forcing that miss. So he's got the reputation of being a tough defender, and there was an example right there for you. And so it's San Antonio with it. They have a nine-point lead. Diaw dishes to Green. He passes to Diaw. Fires for three. Good. Boy, well, he found the perfect spot behind the arc there. Big gap in the defense. Wade picks to Battier. On deep. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Spurs will take it. Chris Bosch is checked in for the Heat. Fourth quarter, still young, just over a minute play. And Parker, here we go. From the low block. Bank shot, no good. And Tim Duncan gets the whistle that time. That's his first foul. And the Heat all time here. You know, a big part of why the Spurs were so good last season, guys, was that they were able to finish games strong. You think a group of vets might run out of gas, but the opposite was true with this group. They turned it up down the stretch and were one of the most productive teams in the league in terms of fourth quarter points. And let's get this update now from Doris Burke, who's across the way on the sideline. Guys, over that last break, I listened to Eric Spolstra address his team. He was not at all satisfied with their effort level, saying, we're losing the hustle plays and all the 50-50 balls. We simply can't win that way. We've got to get after it. Let's see how they respond, Kevin. Well, Clark, a big part of why the Spurs were so good last year in the fourth was because they had so many options when possessions, you know, Steve Stroke getting critical and the game is tight. Well, no question. You've got Parker to create off the dribble. You can always throw it into the low post to Duncan. Uh, but on top of that, you've got a roster full of guys who understand how to play the game and, and know how to play each other. Just the experience that this group has gained together over the years, I think, allows them to execute under pressure. And the call will be against Tony Parker. That's his first foul. Uh, you know, these calls can be some of the toughest in the game for the officials. It all happened so fast. I really think that was the right call. The defender was not really set in that situation. Get on his hassle. He's checked in for Miami. Chalmers comes in for Norris Cole. Splitter is checked in for San Antonio. Parker passes to Ginobili. Back to Parker. Ginobili. Leonard. Ginobili. Let's the free fly. Offensive rebound. And Duncan throws it down hard. 
Well, he won that battle, and in general, they're winning most of the battles tonight. Well, those are some very easy points if you can get them. Well, and like Clark said, they have been getting them, not necessarily all on putback dunks, but a lot of second chance opportunities. LeBron, that's a two pointer. Here's Bush. You know, he just hasn't looked right to me a bit out of sorts, if you will. Something's off with his mechanic, um, at least as I look at it. Here's Parker. And it's LeBron James with the rebound. He just has not been able to get into that groove yet, guys. But as a whole, it hasn't affected them too much. Here's Haslam. And he was fouled in the act of shooting. Chance here now for a three-point play. He got a great read of where that miss was going. And that allowed him to be the first guy to it and get the putback. So it's the Spurs now. Parker with it. Now guarded by Mario Chalmers. Leonard, no luck. The Heat trail by nine. Tries it from the top of the key. LeBron with another miss. I think it's going to be tough for them to trim this deficit if he keeps missing those kinds of shots, Kevin. I mean, they need his points. Nice ball boomer by San Antonio. Ginobili working against Allen. Leonard with the screen on Allen. Down to five on the shot clock. And Leonard gets it to go on the assist by Ginobili. Six points for Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, he didn't have to slow down at all, guys. Just perfectly timed past it. Dwayne Wade's checked in for Ray Allen. From deep LeBron. And again, LeBron missing. Like he's just trying to showcase his range, but he could probably get a better shot in that possession. Yeah, he sure could. It doesn't do you any good if you miss it from that deep. And it seems like nothing is falling for him this quarter. He's really out of his rhythm. It's tipped. And now Parker pushing it up. Going back to stop him. LeBron with the block. And that's out of bounds. San Antonio will retain possession. Time called here. The Spurs decide to talk it over. They're up by 11. And there's a minute 45 left to play here in the fourth. Chalmers against Parker. It's Ginobili with the drive. Duncan dishes to Ginobili. Four on the shot clock. Leans inside. He spurs up and sinks it. And the Spurs lead by 13. Boy, this defense is getting eaten up on the inside, guys. Giving up far too many free runs to the rim. And they haven't been able to return the favor. I mean, their offense in the paint has not been up to par. It is now to Parker. That's tipped. Pass to Duncan. And it's blocked by Hazel. They retain possession. Here's Ginobili. That doesn't go either by Ginobili. And there's the feed to Duncan. And there's the call on Gene. And that'll be his third foul so far. There's 53 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Duncan kicks to Splitter. Back to Duncan. Dishes to Park. Looking to get back on track here. And it's blocked by Wade. Passes it to Chalmers. Good, and the assist goes to LeBron. 34 seconds left in the fourth. Back to Duncan. All sorts of time. Again, Duncan missing. Miami's gone ice cold from three-point land. 0-4 since the start of the final quarter. Very poor shot selection there, guys. San Antonio's gotten just one of four three-pointers to go down for them here in the fourth. Ginobili and Tanslam. Ginobili outside. And so it's San Antonio. He's easily taking this one. 